For more analysis on the current situation in Japan, we're joined live by Dr. Robert Jacobs, Professor of Nuclear History at the Hiroshima Peace Institute. Thanks for being with us this hour, Dr. Jacobs. Uh, we just heard from Sean there. Government reports, of course, released earlier in the week uh, saying the damage and leakage were worse than previously thought. What does this really mean? And just how dangerous is this for the country and its people? It's extremely dangerous. Um, the uh, the TEPCO and the government of Japan have known from the first few days of this incident that there were three full meltdowns that had occurred. This information was kept from the public. Um, the situation currently is, uh, as you say, that there's been a melt through of the initial uh, containment into the secondary containment. and. Uh, at this point, what we hope is that the the melted core will not melt through that second containment. If it melts through that second containment and exits the plant and enters into the ground, this is unprecedented. It's never happened ever before, and nobody really knows exactly what that would lead to. But I would also add that uh, the amount in in Chernobyl, there were a lot of there was a lot of anxiety about whether there would be uh, radiation entering into the groundwater. Well, there's been massive entry of radiation into the groundwater in Fukushima, and that will simply spread through throughout the uh, the water table in the area of northern Japan. And so, uh, the extent to which that contamination will affect people could be quite wide and large. Why, if this kind of information is so vital, has the facts been kept secret? Well, in every single incident in around the world in which there's a serious nuclear accident, there is always a strong effort to minimize a public understanding about what that accident is. And the reason is seen as uh, that minimizing public anxiety and panic is an important thing, but the trade-off obviously in this case, and in all these cases, is that you increase the risk to public health and the exposures of citizens to radiation. Um, so uh, it, that information should have been given to people immediately so that people can make the right decision. People with young children who are particularly vulnerable to radiation exposures uh, because their bodies are growing rapidly would be able to make the decision to move those children out of those areas or pregnant women would be able to move out of those areas. But from a cynical point of view, you could say that it was successful public relations because at the time that three nuclear power plants melted down, what the press largely was saying was, can the, uh, can the government and the company get it under control? Well, that, that was not an option. It was not, it, you know, they had melted down. So when that happened, the press was hopeful that it could be brought under control. And then when the news finally emerges that three plants had melted down, uh, it's essentially not on the media radar anymore because it's months later. So from a public relations point of view, that's successful. However, from a public health point of view, it's disastrous. With that said, hundreds of plant workers are still scrambling to bring the crippled Fukushima reactors to a cold shutdown. When do you think we'll be able to breathe a sigh of relief? When do you think this saga will finally be over? Well, hopefully we'll be able to breathe a sigh of relief in 2012. Um, at this point, the best case scenarios are that TEPCO will be able to bring the plants and, well, not the plants, the, the melted fuel into a safe cold state by early next year. Uh, so far, nothing else has gone right. So this is a best case scenario. But when uh, when will this be over? It won't be over for decades. Uh, there's still impacts from the accident in Chernobyl. Uh, the amount of radiation released into the sea and into the groundwater and also into the air is such high levels that this will ripple forward for decades. There'll be health impacts and there'll be contaminations and people will not return to their homes. Residents of the Fukushima prefecture were evacuated, of course, from the area directly after the nuclear crisis began. Based on your own experience, do you think the Japanese government has done everything to protect its people from radiation? I think that, that, that they haven't. I think that there are still people living in areas where there's high radiation and there's children going to school in areas where there's high radiation. And so there's been a reluctance to move as quickly as possible. Um, and what's more, uh, my own studies have a lot to do with the impact of radiation on communities over a long period of time socially. And a lot of people from the Fukushima area who, even people who were born there but who live in Tokyo are experiencing discrimination in Japan by people who consider them possibly contaminated, even though radiation is not transferable to other people. But there are a lot of problems ahead. If I could give one quick example, in August, there's a very important holiday in Japan called Obon, in which everyone returns to their hometown uh, because 
the spirits of ancestors come to uh, their burial places where their ashes are interned and the family welcomes them. These people in the exclusion zone will not be able to observe this religious holiday and welcome their, the spirits of their ancestors who return on Obon. So when people find that they're unable to carry out their familial obligations for decades because they can't return to these areas, people tend to blame themselves, even if there are structural reasons. So there needs to be some work done to help people through not just the radiation exposure, but the social breakdowns that follow radiation exposures in communities. All right, Dr. Robert Jacobs, live from Hiroshima. Thank you very much for your analysis.